And the final decision I have is from the Second Circuit in Mallets v. Garland. Um, it's an adverse credibility decision. I also don't like to get into the specifics of those, at least on your show, because it's, it's just too much. Like, yeah. it, but it's very good for you know, omissions and inconsistencies. Omissions are less probative of credibility than our actual inconsistencies. It involves a fraudulent passport. Um, you know, a non-citizen came on a visa waiver passport from Ukraine, and Ukraine's not a visa waiver country. Yeah. Um, so that's fraud, fraud from the beginning, but favor, you know, and immigration judges want to sometimes say like, look, you've committed fraud from the beginning. Why should I even believe what you're saying? But there's also case law out there. This case isn't directly on point for it, but there's also case law out there that says we're going to excuse immigration fraud when it's somebody fleeing for their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course, immigration fraud isn't a bar to asylum. It's an also an interesting decision because it involves Ukraine, although mm -hmm. everything predates the russia invasion but most importantly to me is that actually this is the bia's 2019 presidential decision matter of why i am so this decision vacates a presidential bia decision uh -huh. um and so what does that mean i've been saying it on my podcast for a while and i can't figure out the legal reason but if a circuit vacates a precedential BIA decision on direct review, it would seem to me that that decision doesn't exist anymore because it's been vacated mm -hmm. and no other circuit can rely on it and no other judge anywhere can rely on it. Now, it's black letter law that, for example, if the Ninth Circuit did not want to didn't agree with the decision issued by the BIA that all that happens is that that decision is not applied in the Ninth Circuit and it's applied everywhere else. I get that. But when the precedential decision is itself what's on review and the circuit with jurisdiction over that decision vacates it, it seems to me the decision doesn't exist anymore and no one can rely on it. Mm -hmm. Um Scholars in one article we could find called it a zombie, a zombie precedent issue. And I've been calling it zombie precedent. It's still alive, but nobody, but it's really <laughs> dead. And we're trying to figure out if there's, you know, how to, how to maybe explain this even more, uh, maybe working on some sort of article or something. But matter of why I am is immigration review zombie precedent. And I am like looking at the difference between the BIA's matter of why I am decision and the second circuit's Mallets v. Garland decision, which again is the exact same case. It's just remarkable how different judges can look at facts differently and write a completely different decision, completely different decision. I always had a comment on something I said in a video on YouTube about like, well, it depends on you to know more. It's like these lawyers just want to take your money. Law is, if he knows the law, he'd tell you what it is and, and just sit. And I'm like, it was just said right now, we have judges, the, you know, decorated seasoned experts in the law. Yeah. We have completely different results based on the same facts. Completely. Yeah. Not. This, this is the case to show that 100%. Same with the other one, Aladilly. All the facts were always there. Exact same facts. Completely different decision between the BIA, two immigration judges, and then the Sixth Circuit on the exact same facts.